achieved. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Studio Day Heffery Day Quarantine, where, boy, we got some stuff to talk about. Team Tank's right on track. No big deal. You're supposed to lose to the Ravens, and you lost to the Ravens. It happens. Don't worry about it. Uh, but the way that they lost to the Ravens does bring up an interesting point. We're going to get to Micah Parsons in a second. If you follow Micah Parsons, the Penn State linebacker on social media, I believe it's his real account. No blue check mark, but it appears to be his real account. Micah Parsons wants to be a cowboy. Micah Parsons. And maybe he will be with the Cowboys staring down the barrel of a top five pick. But the first thing we got to talk about is yesterday's game, right? The Dallas Cowboys offense, you're not going to hear me complain about much at all. Got something floating here. And there's a reason for that. No team is going to be good at offense when you've got, what's Dak, 31 million, Tyron's like 15 a year, Zach's like 15 a year, Lyle's like 12 a year, so it's 30, 42 plus. 31 is 73. I think Jarwin's like 9 or 10 a year. That's 82, 83. All of your investment on offense is hurt. The offense is supposed to suck. That's no big deal to me. Not surprised by it. It's the way it is. You lose your starting quarterback, life gets hard. You lose your starting quarterback and multiple Pro Bowl tackles and a Pro Bowl guard and your hopefully breakout tight end. You lose all those things. Your offense goes in the tank. The end. Not worried about it. Defensively, that's their team. They wish that they had Anthony Brown, I guess, available. You wish that you had Gerald McCoy never get hurt before the year, but for the most part, that's their team. That's your defense. So, yeah, there's going to be an offseason where you're going to have to make a ton of additions to the defense. That's why Captain Trade Down's trying to ride. Can't wait till I get my T-shirts in. Captain Trade Down. That's why Captain Trade Down's trying to ride because... I don't think it's even good enough for this defense if, like, one starter, let's say you had one starter through the draft that's capable of playing NFL football from day one. That ain't enough. Two? And maybe throw in a free agent addition? Maybe? The problem now is the Cowboys' defense before my primary concern is they're not going to have corners. Cheeto's contract's up, Jordan Lewis's contract is up, but whatever. None of them have played well. And you're going to have Trayvon Diggs and Anthony Brown. That's what you're going to have. So they're going to desperately need corners. Done deal. Got to gotta find multiple corners. They can play NFL football quickly. Got to. But boy, after watching last night and all of this season, <laughs> your defensive line, boy, oh, you better add to that defensive line. You might be short two starters at defensive tackle. You have Tank. You have Randy Gregory. But this defense, whoo, you are short. If you're talking about how many good starters you have on defense, is that number one? Just Tank? Maybe you throw Alden Smith in there, who's coming up on free agency. Maybe Randy Gregory, if he's a starter there, you would call a good starter. But one, is that how many good starters you have? Holy cow, you want to talk about being a ways away from a Super Bowl. Captain Trade Down's got to ride. It's got to happen because you got so much you got to do. But even more importantly than that, Mike Nolan's got to go. And I'm not call for people's job guy. I don't, I don't like doing that. But that's Mike McCarthy's guy. He once hired Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy now hires him. It's his homie. But Mike McCarthy's defenses as a, as a defensive coordinator when it comes to points allowed. 2009 in Denver, he was in points allowed 12th. In Miami in 2010, he was 14th. In Miami in 2011, he was 6th. Now let's go to his last stop, Atlanta in 2012. He takes over a team that ends up 5th. And points allowed. How about the next two years? 27th, 27th. And this year with the Cowboys, 32nd. The pandemic's part of it. Thinking that you can do way more than you can do. Putting personnel out of position. Doing things they shouldn't be doing because you want to run a certain defense. Those things were annoyances at first. But now... Yeah, you got a lot of players you got to replace. We're going to have to talk about the linebackers on this team. 
Leighton Van Der Esch hurt him. Jalen Smith hurt him weekly. They, we're going to talk about the linebackers on this team. You can't find 10 new defensive starters, but you know what I can find? I can find a defensive coordinator because it don't take me long at all. We talked about him weeks ago, and it was kind of joking. I'm not joking. Call Wade Phillips. He wants to coach right now. Wade Phillips, this week, the defense would play better if you had Wade Phillips instead of Mike Nolan. Just blow up everything you've been doing. Let Wade Phillips install the most basic, because he can do 3-4 or 4-3. Like, he's called a 3-4 that was a one-gap. Wade Phillips is a smart guy. Wade Phillips could run this defense. And in one week, it would be better than Mike Nolan. I promise. So, we have reached that point where the Cowboys are going to have an offseason where Jerry and Steven are going to say, Nolan's got to go. And Mike McCarthy's going to be like, no, 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 pandemic, he's my guy, he doesn't got to go, we're going to have our first fight. Our first fight is going to be over Mike Nolan, who gets custody of the defensive coordinator. But I think he's got to go. There's just you, you have to upgrade the personnel, but boy, your coach is hurting you. You can't tell me when people blow assignments consistently and it's not one guy or two guys, it's all the guys, when they're all blowing it, that's your fault, coach. If every student fails the test, I blame the teacher. All my students aren't stupid. My teacher is not getting his job done. So that's my Mike Nolan talk. Okay, Micah Parsons. Um, I probably should have grabbed his post so that you could see it, and I didn't. But uh, Micah Parsons, let me not misquote the man. Micah Parsons. Hold on, I'm looking here. N.S. Parsons. No, give me Micah Parsons. Come on, man. But basically, he said he wants to wear the, uh, what did he call it, blue and white. And the picture that he used was of himself in AT&T Stadium when he played in the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, there we go. I hope I stay in that blue and white prayer emoji. And then he retweeted it and put up a double hook em. I don't know if it's actually hook em or... Woo, hang loose or rock and roll. I'm not totally sure what hand all hand signs mean. But he says, I hope I stay in that blue and white. And then he put up a picture of himself in AT&T Stadium, like looking up like, oh. It's amazing to me, first of all, that young people still want to be Cowboys. It's amazing that they're still so popular. I don't understand how you don't have to win to be popular. Uh, but it's where we are. So it sounds like Micah Parsons wants to be a Cowboy. And... If they were to make that pick, I think they'll have the opportunity to pick Micah Parsons if they want because they'll likely pick somewhere between three and five or six in the NFL draft as long as they don't screw it up and start winning. They'll have a chance at Micah Parsons, and if they pick him, my reaction to that is going to be so torn because let me tell you about Micah Parsons. He's played linebacker for two seasons. One-year starter, although he played a ton as uh, as a freshman. But a one-year starter, and you can tell on tape. You can tell that in coverage he's not real sure what's going on, and you can tell at times, I won't say consistently, but at times that he's not reading and reacting as quickly as you would like from a linebacker. He's been playing the position for two years. But the reason he's considered a top five or top ten pick is because the NFL drafts traits, and he has traits and production. He was a very productive player. He has the traits and the production. Uh, he's old school size and new school fast, new school athletic. The way he can just slip through and around offensive linemen and make plays in the backfield, just his speed, explosion, production. He can rush the passer. He's an incredible prospect. He's a good player. He's an incredible prospect. So if the Cowboys did make that pick, I really don't know what my reaction would be. Because I think he's I think he's far from a sure thing, like a surefire pro bowler or all pro. His potential's through the roof. And if he fulfills that potential, he'll be an all-time great. But off-ball linebacker in the top five, who's not a finished product, I think I'd have to officially be anti that pick. I am. I'm officially anti that pick. Although I'm super intrigued, and I love Micah Parsons. He's a lot of fun. He wants to be a cowboy. We'll see what they do about that. Uh, okay, was there anything else I wanted to do? Uh, Cowboys' biggest concerns? Yeah, their biggest concern is that their entire depth chart on defense has to upgrade. Your linebackers aren't good. 
Your defense, and now your linebackers can be hurt by your defensive line. The fact that your defensive tackles just get bullied, which we saw early in the season, we've saw a lot this season, seen a lot this season. Your linebackers are partially in trouble because your defensive line is not good enough in front of them. But it's also partially, where the hell are you guys going? What are you doing over here? What are you doing over there? Your job is over here. And, you know, so could you blame Mike Nolan and say, hey, bring in somebody who's a better teacher, who has a better plan for this team, and your linebacker play could improve? Maybe, because we've seen Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch play good football. But for the moment, you have to say, our defensive tackles are bad, our linebackers are bad, our corners are bad, our safeties are bad. That's where you are. And next year, you also don't have enough edge guys. You'll have a couple, one that's good, one that's very good, and one that's a good pass rusher, but you don't have enough. So the entire defense is the concern. The entire defense and Tyron. Tyron might be a, how old is he now, like 30? He might be a 60-year-old in a 30-year-old's body. We'll see. So that's the biggest concerns with the Cowboys. Let me see if I can rattle through some of your guys' questions and comments. Remember, leave in the comments at youtube.com slash Jeff Cavanaugh, which we're going to talk about tomorrow, and I will try to take care of you. Got something special coming for you guys tonight, too. Make sure you're subscribed. Stay tuned. Uh, Derek Reynolds. Leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow. Thank you. Mash the thumbs up button. Turn on the notifications. Click on the bell. At what point does run defense actually become valuable? I know that run stuffers and off-ball linebackers aren't worth as much as pass rushers and DBs, but when a team's running for eight yards carry, stopping the run has some value. Is it scheme, talent, both? Just some thoughts about getting bulldozed by the Ravens. It's scheme and talent. It's scheme and talent. And there's no way the scheme is telling them to be in the positions that some of them are. So it's also the teacher. There's a lot of problems in that defense. And you're right. The reason that I and NFL teams want to throw the ball is because the risk reward begs you to in the NFL, because most teams are going to get seven, eight, nine yards per pass attempt. And your quarterback's going to throw eight or 10 picks over the course of a season. And when you run the ball, you're getting half those yards. And you still get holding calls and you still have fumbles. So the risk reward says it screams, throw the ball. You're more efficient. You'll score more points. Do it. If you can get eight yards of carry, never, never throw the ball. Because now the risk reward just flipped. So yes, run defense becomes valuable when you're awful at it. If you're an awful run defending team and teams can legitimately get five and a half, six, seven, eight yards per pop. I don't even have to risk the football against your terrible defense. I'll just run it down your throat and win the game. So yes, run defense is obviously less valuable than pass defense, but if you can't play it at all, then you're dead in the water. So you got to invest something there. Jerry, Jerry Penna. seems like our biggest need is the tackles and linebackers. Ravens had almost 300 yards rushing. I wouldn't want to take two DBs. Oh, I was just mock drafting and replacing all the players, depending on who screwed up in that moment last night. You can go watch me D around. Did a lot of it on Twitter at JC1053. Yeah, D-tackle, linebacker. You'd love to have the luxury of picking an offensive lineman, too, to try to upgrade or fortify that, but you need D-tackles. You need a linebacker. You need multiple corners. You need at least one safety. (laughs) They need a lot on defense. Cowboy Troy 62, hey Jeff, as always, I love your videos. Is it safe to say that Garrett's better than McCarthy? No. Or at least McCarthy was the wrong hire. No. I know McCarthy's had the injuries, but it seems like every other team that hired a new coach has improved. Giants, football team, Panthers. None of them are missing both offensive tackles. They're starting quarterback. Now they're all pro guard, and they're starting tight end. And they've had injuries on defense. McCarthy never had a shot. This team is supposed to be very, very bad. To me, McCarthy's biggest shortcomings are the guys he hired. And you can hold him accountable for that, but I don't think McCarthy was the wrong hire. I think you need to correct his defensive coordinator hire, but I think McCarthy's fine. I really do. Eric Pacina, hey, Jeff, what gives you hope that after watching the players we drafted make mistakes, coaching mistakes, GM mistakes, that we get this draft right? Kind of like the, quote, special team draft from a few years back. I I don't know if they're going to get it right. I'll do my best here to keep you guys informed about what I think of the players. I'll do the work of watching and scouting these guys up. This is year seven for me of watching the All-22 and scouting these guys up. So around here, we'll be informed, and we'll hope they make the right decisions. John Cowboys. Jeff, love the mock work. Would you rather trade the fourth pick to Washington? Captain trade down style. 
or trade Dak to Washington for a ton of picks and then get a QB in the top four and have the eighth pick in cap room. I'm all in on Dak and think we should sign him for what it's worth. Thanks. Sign Dak. Thank you. Sign Dak. Cowboys fan. From the 11 players that started yesterday at defense, how many do you expect back? Four? Five? Tank? Alden, probably not. Did Gallimore start at D tackle and Woods? I don't, I will, I'll expect neither of them to be a starter next year. Cheeto's a free agent. Jordan Lewis is a free agent. Richard Robinson will not be a starter. Xavier Woods will be gone. Thompson won't be a starter. LVE Jalen, two, at least two, maybe three, two or three of those 11. Two or three of them will be starters next year. Zach Kriminak, why are you, aren't you, against drafting Kyle Pitts? Dude's a stud. I understand Jarwin will be back, but from his injury, there are no guarantees. Schultz is okay, but no explosive playmaking ability. I don't consider Florida's Kyle Pitts a tight end. I consider him a big receiver. He lines up at tight end some, and he'll try to get in the way as a blocker, but I don't really think he's an inline blocker. He's a big receiver. So if you're cool with picking a receiver, Kyle Pitts is absolutely a top 10 player in this draft class. 6'6", six, six, what is he, 6'6", six, six, 240, and the way he moves and the way he catches the ball. He's a stud. If you're willing to pick another receiver, go ahead, but I consider him a receiver. And Josh Beauchamp, I'd love to hear your breakdown of rookie and young players from the Baltimore game where you project their future based on this season's performance. Thanks, Jeff. Keep up the good work. Uh, C.D. Lamb was good. Should have caught the Hail Mary. Also should have had a flag on the out and up. Um, C.D. Lamb's great. He's going to be great. Trayvon Diggs is hurt. He'll be back, and hopefully, I think in year two, he'll be a solid NFL starter or approaching that. Third round, Neville Gallimore. Uh, he plays D-tackle, which means he got beat up. Um, and you're hoping he can be a rotational NFL player. Biotish. I think he'll be a starting center, and I think he'll be at least okay. So that'll be a good one. Reggie Robinson played special teams. Um, hopefully he ends up being an NFL player. So we'll see. They were all terrible. Get rid of Mike Nolan. Hire Wade Phillips. All right, guys. Leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow. Make sure you're subscribed. I love you.